All right, fantastic. You are still watching Hashtag Why in the Morning right here with me, Brian Sanko. And remember, you can continue to engage with us on our social media platforms. That's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is at Y254 channel. Remember on Instagram, there's an underscore in my social media platforms is at uh, Brian Sanko 101. And right about now, we're about to get into a very interesting topic. Are you a social media uh, ardent uh, follower or are you an, uh, a constant user of social media? And maybe at some point, you want to earn a living off it and you know you've always checked out uh, beautiful women beautiful influences on top of covers of magazines newspapers blogs television screens and they're making a lot of money out of social media we're going to delve into that topic in just a bit right about now but i'm going to be joined by an amazing and let me call her powerful <laughs> beautiful elegant and all the juicy compliments out there that you've got she's also a media personality radio tv presenter and also a social media brands influencer slash content creator and all the things good that you can think of the one and only ayuma kagula is joining us right here live in studio Good morning. Ah, good morning. Welcome back to Africa, first of all. Oh my gosh. It feels good to be back. <laughs> you know, I feel so back. weird right now, like being on the other side where like you're asking me the question. Because you always used to be this side. I know. I'm just like, you always used to be on this side and now you're on the other it's side. It's nerve But then how does it feel? How's your heart? How are you Lack feeling? Lack of control. I'm just like, Lack what am control. I going to be asked? I am know, I going right? to be able to answer these questions? But relax. The, it, it, it's, it's just a chat with you. Yeah. And I'm so excited. Glad we have you right here on <laughs> Y254. But uh, my first question to you would be, um, if you were to describe yourself in three words how would you describe yourself hmm. i would say fun free spirit and determined fun free spirit and determined yeah yeah why is it because you is it because you are a content creator so that you know, I feel like the free spirit part comes with the content creator. Like, I think I'm just very much go with the flow. Nothing is ever too heavy and crazy. Even when life is getting crazy, it's like, are you most okay? So you're alive. Yeah. Ufa, life is okay. Let's just continue and everything. And then okay. also, like, determined with, like, you know, how hardworking I am and, like, just trying to grind and make money. <laughs> okay. that's, that's like now away from career. But now career-wise, how would you describe yourself career-wise? Career-wise... Uh, I was the same thing, free spirit and determined. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Not like radio, TV presenter, voiceover artist, brand oh. influencer, content creator. No, I'm definitely, I'll just say like media in general. Like it doesn't matter whether the space is like on social media or it's TV or radio. I think I just like talking <laughs> and I need an avenue where people can just hear me blabber around and everything and like say my silly stories and stuff. So like as long as you give me just an inch and like your ears and your, um, your, your, your. A little space. A little bit of space. Yeah. I'm going to talk your head off. <laughs> and, and speaking of talking your head off, uh, you've also been on radio mm -hmm. and you've been on TV. And uh, initially we had this conversation way, way back. Yeah. You told me you never started off as a media personality anymore. You yeah. had studied something else abroad. And then you now came and ventured into media. Yeah. How was that journey for you? Um, I was actually at USIU where I did international business administration. But even when I went to university, I knew I wanted to do media. But my mom was just like... <clears throat> <laughs> Are you sure you want to be on CV? Are you sure you're going to be able to do it? She was like, we need a backup plan for you to be able to fall back on just in case life doesn't work out. So I went ahead and did international business administration, uh, concentrating in marketing. And it was a really good experience. I think it actually helped me in my media career in terms of just marketing myself and me as a brand versus just, you know, marketing another type of brand. But okay. after I finished going to university, I told my mom, just give me one year. I just need one year to try and make it into media. If in one year I haven't gotten a job on TV or radio and nothing is working out, sour, I'll go and become a marketer. I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> but I'll go and use my degree. So yeah, I think about seven, eight months into that one year, I actually went and became a TV presenter. And how did it happen? Did you like audition? Did you like send an audition tape? Recording? I auditioned. Did you send I, CVs? I don't think anyone has hard. heard it's the hard. word it's no like It's hard to me. actually be considered in yeah. media yeah. if you've not studied for it. It's true. I, I heard a lot happen? of no's. I was there in every single audition that was there known to man. I was like scouring all of social media, finding out who's having auditions and everything, going for auditions. Things I had no business auditioning for. I was there auditioning, just trying to make it and everything. So it was definitely really hard. I got a lot of no's more than yeses, but like luckily in the end it you worked You got a out. lot of no's? Hmm. Ayuma got a lot of no's, guys. 
<laughs> imagine. She got a lot of no's. You can imagine. If she got no's, how about you back at home? Yeah. But anyways, I'm just playing. And speaking of social media, you have quite a huge, uh, let me use the word cultic, meaning a large number mm. of uh, social media users on your Instagram, especially yeah. on TikTok, and even on YouTube. Your YouTube, though you've been silent, Kidogo. I what's know. happening? And first of all, how did you get to that space? Do you feel like it's the mainstream media that gave you that presence of, you know, having such a massive uh, uh, outburst on social media? Or you would say you started from scratch creating content and now you're making money off of it. You know what's really funny? Before I even got onto TV, I was on YouTube, yeah, doing my makeup bit. Boy, I can't feel so sad for you if you're trying to follow my advice on putting on makeup back in the day because my foundation wasn't even matching. Like the makeup videos were so horrible. But that's okay. how I started. And then from there, we made it onto TV and then now went back to social media. So I think what really helped me grow was just posting relatable content. And okay. for some reason, Kenyans are obsessed with relationships. <laughs> yeah. So whenever I post TikToks making fun of relationships and how like, you know, men act like this and women act like that, it really blew up from there. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of that, you're also very flexible with the Instagram Reels. Yeah. How did you come to fall in love with Instagram Reels? Because there's a lot of people who try. Personally, I tried and I didn't <laughs> hack it. For you, it seems like it's such a seamless process. Just at 30 seconds of it and your video is viral on yeah. Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. How do you get to that point that you create such, you know, interesting Instagram reels? Let me tell you, COVID was a blessing. Let COVID. Me, COVID was such a blessing because during that time, especially like when it just started, no one was going to work, no one was doing anything. And I had nothing better to do than to create videos. I used to think TikTok was silly. Why are people make, dancing online and like doing funny, funny skits? But then once I was bored and I had nothing better to do, I actually started doing it and I realized just how much fun it was. So oh, you need a lot of free time <laughs> to free start time, doing right. TikTok. But at the same time, you are working on radio and TV. Yeah. How is it even balancing getting off radio and TV and then coming back to do social media? Because I love it so much, you know. Okay. It, it, for me, it's not even like a job. It's almost like it's just fun. It's, a, it's like nothing or if you do, do what you love, you never work a day in your life, then that's like really what it is with social media. I genuinely enjoy making the content. All righty. Yeah. Speaking of content, mainstream media. Mm -hmm. You've been on it. You've been on radio for quite some time. You're yeah. on radio. You're no longer in, in, the, in the space. Would you like to make a comeback maybe? Yeah. Anytime soon? Definitely. As soon as the gig comes uh, through? Like, uh, like, am I shooting my shot right now? No, but Please honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, how, how was your experience in mainstream media? It was really good. Hiatus? No, it was really, really good. I love the fact that like, I like the structure and I like the knowing that like we're talking about certain topics that other people really... Um, are they feel like it affects them and everything and i love the fact that you get viewers from all around the world not just even in kenya people are there watching like you know our local tv stations from outside as well so i really like that about that interesting mm. you're also fashionable <laughs> yeah I, I swear to god if you go to her instagram you will fall in love uh, with her outfits how do you come up with an ultimate outfit for a day like even the outfit you've got today yeah uh -huh. is, it, is it because of being, you know, associated with TV, going through makeup and, you know, having that rundown of having a, a beautiful outfit because, before you come on air? Mm. Or is it just a natural for you? I think it depends on my mood. You can always tell, like, how I'm feeling by my dressing and everything. Today we're going for, like, confident, business, chic, but a little bit fun and everything. But, like, in general, like, how, I'm, how I wake up that day is how I'll end up dressing. And okay. a lot of the times I like to show off my best assets. And I think that's what a lot of people need to, like, make sure when you're dressing for yourself and we're trying to look fashionable and good, show off what you think are your best assets. Your best assets. Yeah. And plus that complements you because you come, you come on camera all the time. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about TikTok and YouTube and Instagram. Uh, a lot of influencers and uh, your other title is also brand influencer slash media personality content creator. Yeah. Do you think uh, it's an overrated space where everybody who is a public figure they always want to create at least uh, a social media video that will go viral so that they can use it to propel their narrative. And plus, can you live off of it and make money out of it? You know what's really funny? I don't think um, content creation is oversaturated. A lot of people say that, but let me tell you, there's nobody that's doing what you're doing the way you're going to do it. Okay. And right now, the um, online marketing space in Kenya has really blown up. Like, it has become huge right now. Before, you were just be getting exposure <laughs> and free products, and that's yeah. basically it. But now, I think brands have really realized that they would rather, um, your customers would rather hear a recommendation from someone that they think is their friend 
versus yeah. just some random ad that's playing, you know, on um, any different stream of media. Okay. You want to know that, like, okay, I, I trust Ayuma. Ayuma is really critical about, I don't know, her hair. So when she says that this hair is the best, I think I'm going to do it rather than just some random girl just yeah. smiling and you see hair. Interesting. Yeah. You mentioned big, big, big on, on your hair. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what is the main niche for you right now? For the I content, especially uh, before you said you mentioned you used to do hair tutorials, beauty and makeup tutorials. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you like transition to something else and are you making money out of it? I've kind of just like um, broadened it a lot more. So it's kind of like beauty, lifestyle, travel is everything. It's hard, it's, it's more difficult when you put yourself in one niche. I think it's good in the beginning to grow that um, uh, people that are watching you and everything to grow it to stick to one niche. But if you're able to um, influence other people in different areas, Areas, that really works well so at least for me it's just like whatever is going on in my life okay. in general is what I'm gonna be able to uh, make content on do you believe somebody can make money off TikTok because because you're massive on TikTok as well yeah especially right now yeah. for somebody who is starting back at home and they're like hey daddy mama nataka tu kwanza na TikTok leo <laughs> do you do you do you believe uh, somebody can start on TikTok right now and make money off of it through the short uh, for for TikTok. How long is it? Is it a minute and something nowadays? I think it has been extended. It's even gone up. Yeah, it's gone up to like uh, I think almost five six minutes, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But you can definitely make money off of TikTok, off of Instagram, and it's just all about now like the brands that you're working with and how you're positioning yourself as yourself as a brand. I think a lot of people when you go into social media, you're not seeing yourself as the brand. So the same way you'll be having meetings in the office, you need to have meetings with yourself. How much right. content do you need to post? a day in order to grow um, okay. how do you want people to perceive you when they look at your content are you fun are you serious are you cooking are you cleaning There's literally anything people make money off of cleaning their own homes on True, TikTok yeah. and True, organizing absolutely. their fridge you know small small things you just have yeah. to find your niche and what you love and you can really make a lot of money from it and sp speaking of that uh, you've been on a lot of magazine covers yeah. and uh, would you say being on a magazine cover actually uh, gave you an opportunity to be seen by other brands or mainstream brands that have actually had an opportunity to work with you hmm i wouldn't say it was like the main thing that propelled me but i think in general it all built up like um, the attention. So I think it works together with like the TV, the magazines and like, you know, newspaper, the social media, all of them together definitely helped. I think I would have struggled a lot more, especially on social media, if I didn't have the um, mainstream. The mainstream yeah. space, uh, yeah. Uh, feedback, uh, when you have a huge presence on social media, and for you, you're on TV slash radio and you're, and you're getting feedback from both sides. Yeah. And uh, there's usually a lot of comments that come with that. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle <laughs> how do you handle hate <laughs> and love comments? Because sometimes it can really get toxic. Hey, I know, right? Hey, can it can people really get toxic. Yeah. How do you handle feedback, by the way? No. The comments, the DMs. Let me tell you, um, it's great when you're loved. Love is always amazing. You want to feel all that positive energy. Until when you do something wrong and then people are there looking at you like, What's wrong with you? What is, as in, I've gotten the craziest comments. I remember just from the very beginning when I was starting YouTube, and um, this was before even TV and everything, and I was posting a vacation with my sisters, and then someone commented, sent a whole email, and e imagine how pressed you have to be to write an email to me and say how, who do you think you are? You guys are trying to be the Kardashians. I was like, wow, okay, sour. But I think in general, you have to have thick skin. And the Beyonce way of just ignoring the negative, you don't even comment on it. Once you comment, you give life to it. So I just yeah. ignore the negative and like soak in all the positive. All right. And speaking of Beyonce, there's a term we, I think this is way, way back. We mm. had a YouTube episode where we talked about colorism. Yeah. And let me throw it back to you. As, let me use the word melanated. As a dark, or dark skin, they say it, mm -hmm. as a dark skinned woman, do you think it's five times harder in mainstream media to be recognized, to be, uh, to be appreciated even professionally, and even be put in places where, as compared to, let's use the word fair skinned, yeah. fair skinned women are? Do you think it's 10 times harder for people who are more melanated? I think it's definitely getting better now than it was before. Okay. There really was a time where, like, honestly, you had to be extra. I think a dark-skinned woman is like, okay, you, you can be good at what you do, but you have to wear an extra hat, you do a little extra more. And before, you would see, like, you know, lighter-skinned people, like, girl, you're just pretty. Sometimes okay. you're not even pretty, you're just light. <laughs> so now you make it on there. But I think now you're things pretty, have become... You're not light. 
No, as in, sometimes it was just your light. Your Before light. it was like you have to be pretty. You have and to then be now, pretty. If you're light, you're automatically pretty. Okay. But now I think so much awareness has come into colorism and we're realizing even in Kenya that it's such a big deal that I yeah. think that there has been a good mix and like um, really good conversation happening from it. It's no longer such a huge issue, but it's definitely still there. Okay. We have to like the neocolonialism yeah. has really affected us. <laughs> it's like they prefer somebody who is fair skinned over more melanated, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's five times harder. In professional zones, uh, let's talk about it. Think uh, the work environment from your from your experience. Do you yeah. think uh, you've experienced more toxicity in mainstream spaces, or would you say it's part of the culture, like working under toxic bosses, uh, uh, just uh, I'd say un unfathomable deadlines, meeting them, especially if you are a woman of a certain caliber. I think there's just pressure in general for women, you know, okay. especially like in the workspace in general. So like, I, I don't even know, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's specifically in media where there's like, you know, toxic workspace and everything. I just think like the Kenyan African woman working faces a lot of pressure, whether it's deadlines and everything, but like it's just a lot of pressure and we're honestly doing so much juggling work life plus home life. It becomes a lot, but like there's nothing else you can do, but just try your best. Okay. Mm. Uh, you said you started, you started off on social media before you went back to TV. Would you advise somebody who's watching back at home right now and tell them uh, you can start with yeah. YouTube. You can start with what you have from your own experience. What is your word of advice to them? Start now start whatever your content is post that content you can always go back and delete once you decide that you don't like it but that thing of like waiting for having the right camera the best phone waiting to have um influential people to come and collaborate with let me tell you if the people don't like you they don't like you it doesn't matter if i did a video with beyonce right now that video might do really well and then afterwards when they realize it's just me it's not gonna do well i think you have to start garnering the like um response from your audience from the, the very beginning and put yourself as that from the very beginning and just post all your content all right whether you have bad camera or not because <laughs> i know people always say you have to have a really good camera you actually don't all right mm -hmm. and uh, you're also a brand ambassador to so many companies yeah. uh, and I'd, I'd just like to know uh if if for someone who's watching back at home mm -hmm. they want to be the brand ambassador for y254 <laughs> <laughs> the tv station yeah for you you're you're majorly for products especially mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how did it how did this brands approach you and what are some of the things they considered before they said hey ayuma we'd like you to be a brand ambassador for our abcd product yeah how did uh, that happen i was actually okay for the longest time i was the one reaching out to brands and being like hey pick me really? pick me You're the one reaching out <laughs> the ones i reached out to no one really never <laughs> <laughs> no one really said anything back it was it's, it's always good when they're the ones who come to you and that only happened organically after i got the numbers and everything Thing. So what really works for me is like they look at like what's your target audience. Okay. My audience is, is really from the ages of 18 to about like 35 and uh -huh. th from there it picks which brands are going to work with you. Some okay. brands you're lying to yourself that I'm going to be like I'm not a mom, you know, yeah, I'm not a wife. Too, too, too. So like yeah. certain brands, it's, why am I trying to advertise diapers? It's not going to work, you know. Okay. So you have to see like who is your, who are, who's your audience and what can you sell to them in an authentic way. So it doesn't just feel like an ad. This one has just been paid to to sell us this product. Okay. Mm. Speaking of products, uh, let me switch back a little bit. Let me dig deeper into my mind. Yeah. Uh, there was a time, uh, Yami Mami, you used to work with her. She was your co-host on your television show that you're working with. Yes. AKA Murugi Muni. And uh, there was rumor on a blog that you guys had a nasty split up. Of course, <laughs> she left TV and you let her on left. Yeah. Uh, she went and created her TMI podcast with Lydia KM, who yeah. was also your colleague. Mm -hmm. And uh, rumor had it that you guys had a nasty split up because she chose Lydia KM ah. over you. Ah. And the comments were like, she would have chosen Ayuma. Ah. Oh, Lydia KM is not better. Ah. Is it a true story or do <laughs> it was a lie? Who started this rumor, first of all? That's what I want to know. Who started this rumor over here? Uh -huh. <laughs> but no, it's definitely not a rumor. I mean, it's not um, tr true at all. When it comes to um, the TMI podcast with Lydia and uh, Joanne, they do such a good job with that. You can tell like their personalities mesh so well with that uh, podcast. And even the way they're able to bounce ideas off of each other honestly like it was made for them it was a collaboration that was really made for them but there was never any beef or anything i just wasn't a part of <laughs> the podcast you know you're There's, never considered you're never contacted but it wasn't it wasn't like a thing of i'm going to choose you instead of you 
Okay. You know, it was just that they're going to make a podcast. You know what I mean? It okay. was just a thing that they decided to do together, and I 100% support it. We're actually still friends and everything. You're still friends, you still talk, you still meet, hung out, link yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Wow, I was at okay. her shop for Joanne. We saw Lydia. Like, honestly, there's no beef over there. We're all uh, doing good. Wow, interesting. <laughs> now the air is clear. Yeah, hey, because I'm just like, now clear. who started this rumor, surely? And yeah. well, I'm going to call Joanne after this and just be like, girl, do you Please know what do. they're saying? Please do. Please do. And speaking of that, on your finger. Ah! Good Lord, what is that? What is that? <laughs> Please tell us it's not a. Please tell us it's not a diamond. Um, there, there's a couple of diamonds. There. There's a couple of diamonds in that. There's a couple of. Is diamonds that an engagement there. ring? Yeah. Or something. So yeah. you're engaged in short. Yeah. You better be kidding right now. It happened. You better be kidding just right last now. Week. You better. I would try to show it at the camera. I'm trying to hide. Know. I'm trying to please hide my lack it. of nails. Can you see? Oh. You know, I tried to reach out to Ayuma. I called her number. It says the mobile subscriber is out of the country. <laughs> Kumbe, Kumbe the, the, those things that were happening behind the scenes. Yeah. So you had traveled or something? Yeah, I went to Dubai okay. for um, a vacation. What I thought was my birthday vacation. Oh, it was a birthday vacation. Yeah. But then you, you turned 30. I was offline, but happy post birthday. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> happy post, mm -hmm. post, post, happy post birthday. Yeah. 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 So yeah, it was just supposed to be a birthday vacation to the king out and everything. Okay. I went there with the love of my life. Life and now I'm engaged. I can't believe it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually engaged. So off the streets or off the market? Eh, we, are, we, we are no longer in the streets. We are no way. longer in the streets. We are no longer in the streets. And speaking of <laughs> speaking of the streets, you know, dating for a social uh, social media personality, I'd say, an influencer, or uh, let me just say. Uh, media personalities mm. sometimes it can be it can get really bad yeah because uh, you get people who can't believe you people think you have so many people you've met a lot of people because you've been on radio and TV yeah would you say your journey from your experience mm. would you say it was it has been easy because right now you've got a ring on your finger <laughs> let me tell you what has helped me with this is keeping my relationship private private you never yeah. posted it on social I never As Lydia post has and even Joanne yeah them they're brave me I don't know how they do it but like for me what works for me in my relationship I don't want to have outside influences coming in and like I love y'all you guys are my friends we're all in this social media family together but like I want to keep that part so se uh, separate and sacred to me because it's so important to me okay. And okay. I'm really happy that like the person that I'm with isn't even on social media, doesn't care about social media, doesn't care about um, the limelight. So it makes it really easy that I can be wild and crazy. And then them, they're like chill and calm and work a regular job and just do normal stuff. And like it kind of grounds me as well because you okay. can get wrapped up in social media thinking that you're this big celebrity. At least when I come back home, it's just like, are you, you're just a Yuma. Yeah. There's no um, celebrity media, things TV over and here. Fans, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and speaking of that, uh, do you think people who post their spouses or uh, their lovers on social media, hmm. it will definitely end up in premium tiers? No. Because for most public figures, it has always, it has always <laughs> been. I don't know if it's a pattern, it's a thing. Yeah, like it's uh, like a curse Even for media. Frankie and uh, Frankie and her, his, his, his latest uh, catch. Yeah. Let me call it catch. Yeah. It ended up in tears. In yeah. Mini. They had a back and forth on social media, recorded a video, responded, recorded a video. And that's the Insta reason story. why I can I know myself. And I think okay. it's good to know yourself. Some people are able to do it. Like you even said, Lydia shows her um, her boyfriend. Joanne shows her husband. They're able to keep their emotions in check and make sure that they don't go and show all their messy drama on social media. Okay. Me, I know myself. If I was to have a partner that was on social media and he pisses me off, you'll be seeing these cryptic, cryptic messages. You'll be seeing me deleting his pictures. Next time I put them back on, next time they'll be deleted. It would a be too much. Us it's on IG. It's too much drama. So because I know myself and my madness, let me just You'll keep not it post private. yours. Uh -huh. Not even a finger. You know, I've seen people post a leg. You don't see a, 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 a bit just of a, a hand little. somewhere in that picture. Uh -huh. yeah, Th that's the most it. you're going to get. <laughs> that's, the fa that's the farthest. Like, this is what you will see for the rest of your life. This is what we are going to see, right? I think Why are you works, mean? It works Why best are you like mean? that. <laughs> Why are you mean? Mm -hmm. as, as speaking of that, mental health, you yeah. know, um, in Kenya, I, I, I understand you're well traveled, you've been to several countries, you've been to states before. How is that experience, you'd say, as compared to Kenya? 
uh, when it comes to talk, talking about Manta's mental health, mm. uh, a lot of people would say, you know, it's 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 not it's not an African disease. Mm -hmm. It's 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 more of an urban people disease or a cool kid type of disease. Yeah. But when you look at the statistics, there's a lot of young men and women who have died by suicide. Nowadays, they say it's died by suicide because mm. it's now a disease. Mm. And when it comes to that in Kenya, uh, there's not much uh, enough conversations. Would you say, as compared to like? having traveled to states or lived in states, Dubai and the rest, the conversation is different. I think there's definitely a bigger, um, what's it called? It's People are more open outside for sure. And I think there's lack of stigma. I think over here, it's like, if you have a mental health issue, you're automatically deemed as crazy or okay. why are you complaining? So you have a roof over your head, so you have yeah. food. Mm -hmm. I, you know, my mom used to walk a 100,000 kilometers with a jug on her head. You, your life is so much easier. But I think definitely um, millennials and hey, Gen Z have really opened up the conversation in Kenya when it comes to mental health. And they've made it so that it's okay to speak about the issues that you're going through. And once we actually speak about it, you realize you're not alone. We're all going through some sort of mental health issues. Yeah. You don't have to be literally on medication and things are horrible but you know it's good to speak about it and therapy is a great thing for everyone whether you're going through something or not yeah mm. and 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 I love the fact that uh, September is suicide awareness month mm -hmm. and uh, glad that you're shining light on that even when it comes to the media spaces do you do you feel like uh, there's enough television shows uh, that talk about mental health of course that also goes in line with empowerment you yeah. realize there's a lot of empowerment to the girl child more mm. as compared to like the boy child you'll hear parts for girls yeah I don't know what for girls, yeah. you know, I want for girls. Yeah. Rarely do you hear it for the boy child. Do you think that has created a huge gap when it comes to even balancing the equation in yeah. terms of even distribution of resources to the boy child mm. as compared to the girl child? And you realize even women are becoming more and more empowered and more powerful taking over spaces, mm. political spaces. We've seen Nakuru, Nakuru City, yeah. now calling it Nakuru Girls. A yeah. lot of women have taken up leadership positions. Do you think that has disenfranchised the boy child from your perspective? Um, I'm not sure if get women being in a position of power is disenfranchising the boy child. I think the only thing I can say is when we see how like there's so much emphasis on like how great women are and how um, and as opposed to men in terms of being able to talk uh, freely about your emotions and everything, it's really important that like men feel the same way in terms that like, they're able to talk about their emotions, they can openly free um, their speak about what they're going through without feeling that they are going to be stigmatized for it. It's okay, okay for a man to cry. It's okay for it's a okay man, for a man, to, man go to cry. Through. Yeah. You, advocate, you would advocate for your man to cry? Uh, you know, everybody in the world cries. I would rather like you cry public, with me. In public. Like, okay, if the situation comes, maybe you just cry. It's okay. I'd rather you, you cry, cry than blow up over there and okay. be sad in the corner. And like that really shows like men don't feel safe. You need to have, like as women, we need to create a safe space for the men in our lives that they feel safe enough to come to us when they're feeling vulnerable and emotional so okay. that now they're not mm -hmm. holding it all to themselves in the end, trying to keep strong and at the same time feeling as if us were the ones who are overpowering them and overruling them and all of that. Right. Mm. Interesting. You will build up on that when you take a very short break. And when we come back, we'll be asking her, what is her relationship with money? This is a constant <laughs> question that I always ask on this show. Do you attract money? Does money at is, is money attracted to you? Do you attract money? Is money attracted to you? Or do you chase money or does money chase you? That will be her question when we come back. But continue interacting with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. is Y254 channel. Remember on Instagram, there's an underscore. Mine's is at Brian Circle 101. Remember, it's an up close and personal with Ayuma Kagule, Matters, social media and brand influencing right here on Y254. All right, fantastic. You are still watching Why in the Morning right about now on Y254 channel. The segment is Entrepreneurship Tuesday, and we are all about guests that inspire you, give you insights to get you start up something that will help your life. And we are still on Up Close and Personal with Ayuma Kaguli right here. And continue engaging with us. My social media platform is at Brian Circle 101. Before we went on a break, we were actually having a little uh, argument opportunity. But uh, my first <laughs> question was, uh, when we come after the break, I was to ask her what is her relationship with money does she attract money is money attracted to her does she chase money or money chases her and let me direct it to you do you attract money 
Is um, money attracted to you? I think money is attracted to me, but we have a toxic relationship. You have a toxic relationship. Yeah, we're always with money. waking up and getting back together. That's what's okay. happening within me and money. Like as fast as it comes, it goes away just as fast like that. So like this, um, during this like time in my life, I've really been trying to work on my savings, work on budgeting. A key sticking to a budget. Sticking to a budget is the hardest thing in the world, and making sure that the first thing that I see was I'm walking up and down the streets. So I'm not just buying. That's like the biggest problem that I. I have once the money comes uh -huh. it doesn't stay in my pocket for too long <laughs> interesting because especially when you're in the public domain mm. uh, where people a lot of people have a lot of opinion about you when you post something or when you feature on a blog or something mm. and when it comes to even management there's a lot of uh, you'd say influencers or even artists or just let me use the word superstars who have you saw somebody got 10 million two years later they only have 50 more care shillings. Do you yeah. think it's, 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 it's because of lack of financial literacy or the saving culture has not been taught, especially to upcoming uh, media personalities? Um, we, even, we even saw media personalities, you know, putting up pay bills to be yeah. contributed for money to clear their hospital bills and whatnot. Do you feel like it's because of lack of financial literacy? Yeah, I definitely think that's a big thing. I wish that was something that we were learning in high school, you know? Like, instead of us trying to figure out Pythagoras theorem and all of that, could they have taught us how to save money? Could they have taught us how to, like, invest your money wisely? Which uh, trusts and bonds and what are we supposed to be doing? What does all of this mean? Because you become an adult and then, boom, all of these responsibilities are put onto you and you just don't know what you're supposed to do. Some people are getting into debts and everything that if they would have just known what they're supposed to do, it would have made their life a hundred times easier. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's also pressure even to, you know, try and meet the expectations of people because mm -hmm. when you're an on M personality or in, a, or in the public domain, like I said before, yeah. you always have to maintain a certain profile, you know. People know you for a certain image. The day you don't have the resources to sustain it, you fall into depression. Yeah. Some others even disappear for years because yeah. they don't have something to actually, like, revive them back. Do you feel also in a sense of, like, a media perspective, it is something that a lot of people go through who are in front of the cameras, on social media influencers and whatnot and to some point it even forces them to go to you know to enter into unscrupulous business dealings that sometimes end up costing their lives yeah definitely there's the pressure i just think it's for social media in general even if you're just a regular person who's not working in the media but you're on social media and you're seeing your friends and family and other people that you admire and this one has bought a new car then this one has bought a house and then this one is doing this and that and you feel that pressure to like do the same thing as them when really the only competition that you should be having is with yourself. Okay. I can say like I can be lit I can go do shopping at like the highest end store and at the same time you'll still find me in Toy by Mutumba. It doesn't matter like which um how how well you're doing and trying to show off how well you're doing. It should just be doing what you truly enjoy. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh let's talk about competition. You mentioned that uh when you're in the public space, in the public space or in the public domain, mm. uh, there's people you look up to, there's people you admire. Now there's the likes of Kim Kardashian and the rest of the socialites who are living the life. They yeah. are spending that money, uh, show, showing up at parties, attending events, for, especially for influencers in Kenya, or let's just say general East Africa, mm. or maybe let's say Africa. Mm. Let's exclude South Africa, Kidogo, because they're like at a different land. Yeah. Do you feel like for, uh, for, for Kenya, we try so much, we try so hard to actually fit in? Yeah. And even for the ladies, you go to the extent of even doing engaging and crazy stuff to I just get a life to post on social. Yeah, it's so sad. Like a lot of um, what you would say are like the what, who people look up to in the pers um, in the media world on social media are the ones who are flaunting wealth and everything. And no, and some people you don't really quite know where that money came from. You know, yeah. it's just uh -huh. a rumor, and you hear rumors that are not too good of where that money came from. But at the end of the day, it's like people don't care because they have the money. So I, it's, it's kind of sad because it's like. Uh, you don't have that like work ethic anymore where you just like started from the bottom we're moving up slowly slowly as time goes people just Trusting want the process yeah people want instant gratification you want to wake up today and be a millionaire today immediately right. which is not how the world works which means you're gonna have to do some crazy things to become that millionaire instantly yeah. which i feel sad for some people who like if that's what they're looking up to and that's what they're trying to be Alrighty. Uh, I'd love us to play again, but I have two more questions for you before we wind up. Let's talk about, you know, doing anything for money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most socialists or influencers, uh, there's been word on the cab. Let me use the word word on the cab, mm. is that they're being funded by 
a sponsor, mysterious sponsor. Mm. And when this sponsor decides to remove themselves from the equation, all of a sudden things are falling apart, they're getting depressed. There was a time we saw uh, an ex-reality uh, TV star, Kenyan, who got stuck at a club and she was jailed. Yeah. I'm sure you remember that yeah. story. Yeah. Do you feel like it's because of a lack of just self-value and self-worth? I think it's what you're valuing that's the problem. So a lot of these people, they value themselves and that's why they've put a price on themselves, you know? And I think that once you are there valuing the money that comes along with these people, that's when you're already like at a downward spiral because then there's no morals and ethics on what you can and can't do. It's okay to uh, want somebody that's, you know, doing well in life, but that shouldn't be the number one criteria for you to date somebody you want to be with them. Okay. There should be so much more you know their personality how they treat you all of that should also play a part in why you're going to date somebody but if okay. the only reason is just because of money so that now you can post on social media or do whatever it is that you want to do then the problem starts there and like i don't even know how you can how we can help you because sadly that's like the trend that's been happening right now wow crazy yeah. crazy yeah. crazy uh my second last question before we play the game mm -hmm. uh, maybe can we play the game first or <laughs> we i ask the final question uh, uh, so, um, interesting. Uh, 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 th th this question is escaping my mind, but let me ask. Uh, just in case maybe you are to uh, make a comeback for radio or TV, which one would be your first? Which one do you love most? Or digital, between digital, radio, TV? Ooh. And maybe for any media manager who's watching out there and they're saying, <laughs> hey, I want this in front of my station. <laughs> Can they come through? Which one is your first love? Radio, TV, digital? Mm. I think digital is always going to be there and that's the great thing about digital is because on the online space it can work in congruence with um, TV and with radio. So digital will always be there. And then I think whichever comes first, comes first, and why not both? I would love to be on TV and on radio once again. I know it's definitely gonna happen. Yeah, <laughs> all amen. of this personality <laughs> and all of this voice, Woye well, can't be just my dog that's just getting all this madness. I think everyone else needs to like be a part of this madness as well. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen pretty soon. Amen. And it's just something to look forward to. The universe has had you. Yes. And speaking of that, um, from your experience, even working in mainstream media we, we had talked about this earlier do you feel like sometimes it's it's hard to climb up the ladder you have to do a lot of time mm. to be recognized mm. or to even get that so you had a TV show for a very long time yeah. and it's not easy to find yeah. somebody who was on TV for that long and they are young mm -hmm. what would you say was your core that actually made you so grounded and stayed on TV for so long with a solo segment for yourself yeah. and even on radio you also had a radio show um, I think it's just perseverance and hard work, to be honest. Like, you have to continue knocking and knocking and knocking on that door. If that door doesn't open, you're going to break into that window. You know what I mean? Because once you hear the first no, the second no, the third, the fourth, the fifth no, it's so easy to get discouraged and think, okay, you know what, this is not for me, then I'm not going to continue to do it. But you have to just continue pushing and be willing to start at a lower part and work your way up. I think that really happens a lot. And so many times, like, we're so quick to want to start at the top but it's okay to start at the bottom, the bottom work now. your way up and that's when you build longevity when yeah, you're able true, to true, actually true. grow instead of just all of a sudden being at the top and then you can fall just as quick nice interesting yeah. fantastic one lesson that you've learned from uh, uh, you said you're a, you're a brand ambassador for uh, a couple of products mm -hmm. one lesson you've learned from you know being a brand, brand ambassador of products mainstream products especially and also working in mainstream media just one lesson and then we can finalize with the game um, be authentic. Don't just choose brands. Be, make sure you choose brands that work with you, your personality, your brand in general. Make sure that even your audience can see you actually using these brands. Okay. I think in the very beginning of your social media content creation career, it's very easy to just pick anyone and everything because you're just so eager to work with all of these brands. But you have to be really picky and choosy and make sure that you're picking brands that you genuinely love using. Okay, yeah. authenticity. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, let, let's let's play this game. So uh, I'm scared. here, yeah, don't aye, don't aye. be. Please don't be. It's such an easy game. I know it has a restriction because you you've got a. Anyways, story for another day. Uh, kill, marry, date. Whew, okay. Kill, marry, date. Mm -hmm. Let me think of a, of an interest. Sakaja. So let me let me give you Sakaja. Uh -huh. Kill, marry. Let me say kill, marry, slap. The one you will spare, the one you will kill, and then the one you will marry. Okay. In another world. Okay. So Sakaza, mm -hmm. uh, Ferdinando Manyala, Andrew Kibe. 
kill, marry, slap. Who do you kill, who do you marry, who do you slap? Uh, this one is not even that hard. Andrew Kibi, I'm sorry, you're dead. Um. <laughs> Why not? Why not, Mr. Kife, brother? No, I'm Why sure not, Mr. Mr. Kife? It's the options that you've given me, by <laughs> the way. It's not nothing against you, Baba. It's just the options that have been given. Not so good. him, he'll be killed. And then slap. Ay. Omanyala. Ay. Remember? I'll, I'll have to slap him. You'll slap him? Yeah. Poor Omanyala. Imagine. And then Sakaja. Hmm. Sakaja. Hmm. Yeah. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. But w w what is it about Sakaja, guys? It's those dimples. I think it just makes Kenyan women go crazy, by the way. Those dimples. Hmm. 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 No, I, see, I should go and get my Kalitu surgery. I know. Do, do just, I look at uh, something? Have this something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, interesting. interesting. But he, he, he had a billboard uh, thanking Nairobians to actually, who, ha, who had voted for him. He's actually like the first political leader to, to give thanks yeah. to people for voting him in office. Yeah. 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 I'm just happy with how Kenyans have dealt with the elections in general. Like but then how, how is it for you? Did your fifth fifth? Huh? Did your fifth fifth? Me, I'm just happy that we're peaceful. That's you, all I am. I'm fifth. happy that you we're peaceful. You don't want to talk about it anymore. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I can only imagine. <laughs> Okay, and uh, if people want to access you, maybe they want to check out your content. You have you you have a lot of uh, functionable photos on your social media platforms. I can see it's running right there on your yeah, screen. Yeah. If people want to even have that kind of photography, what are some of the hacks and the tips, and where can they access you even your content on social media and whatnot? Yeah, so definitely go ahead and follow me on social media. It's Ayuma Kaguli. That's on Instagram and TikTok. I think I'm over there probably on Facebook, but I'm not really active like that over there. And you can definitely go ahead and send me an email if you want to work together at all at simplyayuma at gmail. And yeah, definitely looking forward to hearing from you. All right, interesting. Is this your first, uh, first uh, up close and personal since you left radio and TV? He, he, it's TV my especially for it's TV. It's my second. This is your second. It's right? my second, but it's like a major one. You know, it's I've like done another interview, one. but like I'm just like I feel so weird being on the interviewee instead of the yeah. interviewer. Yeah. Instead of being on. Can this I start other asking side? you some questions? Should I please put you in the hot seat also? Right now. Maybe so that people the want to know. Please behind <laughs> the scenes, <laughs> serve me, serve me, serve me, serve me. It's Tuesday, but uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us, Ayuma. Thank it you. has been exciting to have you. We wish to have you once again when you get time please don't yes. forget to pass so. by our station and say hello mm -hmm. and just in case there's something please always be free to give us a call right about now ayuma kaguli coming through for us right now on our segment entrepreneurship tuesday social media and brand influencing if you wanted to venture into that world definitely you've gotten some of the three two four five skills that you needed to actually hack for yourself and on that note, we are taking a short break. When we come back, we still have another guest coming through. Continue interacting with us on our socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, is Y254 channel. My social media handle is at BrianSako101. Hashtag is Y in the morning. Please don't change the channel. <laughs>